Yeah, you uh, you can play it on the piano. It's just really stupid <laughs> because look at this fingering. There might be a better way to do it. I don't know. This is just the way I worked it out. That's all normal. That's fine. But then to jump down to play that CBC line. And I'm left with nothing. I just went four. And <laughs> this is so stupid. Four cross crossover with three. <laughs> then drop three down. Drop three down again. <laughs> that is the dumbest fingering ever. Oh God, it's probably a better way to do it. You figure it out, I don't know. I took a lot of tries, but the beauty of tactile memory, I mean, now, I, now I've got it, like. there, you know? Like, my hand will never forget that. Anyways, let's talk about Mario Kart. By the way, check out the merch store if you haven't already. Link is in the description down below. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, that looks much better. So the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack has been the subject of tons of really great analysis across YouTube from so many different creators. Perhaps some of the best note-by-note -note in depth analysis has been done by 8-Bit Music Theory. Tons of great videos about various tracks from the soundtrack of Mario Kart 8. I highly, highly, highly recommend you go check that out if you're looking for a note by note melodic musical theory based analysis of the soundtrack. One of the biggest differences uh, with the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack from all the previous ones, as I'm sure many of you know, is that it is the first Mario Kart soundtrack to be performed at least partially with live instruments and a live band. I mean, just take a listen to this theme. That's fantastic. Oh, what, a, what a great big band sound. What a great match for the Mario Kart main theme, I think. I mean, it's chaotic, it's fun, it's crazy. And all throughout the soundtrack, there are incredible usages of live music. But you know, one, one of the things that's really interesting too, to me, is the mixture in many places. I mean, just look at in this theme alone. It's not just live music. We also include that familiar synthesized sound that all of the other soundtracks utilize. <laughs> Did you guys hear that berry line in there? Yikes. Anyways, yeah, so like the incorporation of the synthesizer, that synth lead in there, I mean, it's a cool way to completely change the soundtrack of the game by now making it with live instruments, but by still including all of the, uh, the, the things that have been carried over from game to game to game and that familiar sound that we hear with, with synthesized instruments. Synthesized instruments, say, say, well, I'll say that 10 times fast. Dinstru it becomes dinstruments. <laughs> That was like a command. Synthesize the In keeping with a uh, paying homage to the previous games and the previous styles and the previous themes, check this out. That's literally the original Mario Kart theme. Check it out. It's a cool reimagining of that original theme, but now with live instruments and a live big band. I mean, that, what a cool sound for that. And utilizing a live soundtrack just created so many memorable moments throughout this entire soundtrack that just make the game feel a little bit different than a lot of previous games. And of course, obviously, you know, we're also talking about Dolphin Schultz and the Mario Kart lick. <laughs> And that's Nathan from the Saxologic channel. You should definitely go check that out. But the lick itself was originally performed by Kazuki Katsuta. <laughs> I think that's been transposed onto every instrument known to man at this point. Also, check this out. Kazuki Katsuta is part of a group called Dimension. Honestly, it seems like an extension of the Mario soundtrack. It's pretty friggin' sweet. <laughs> fantastic player. I'm also gonna put a link in the description to a really great article talking about the Mario Kart soundtrack and, and the concept behind some of the compositions and how it relates to the game. I mean, one of the things they talk about is how the secret behind a, a good Mario Kart track is the ability to be looped and played 
hundreds if not thousands of times without becoming grating on the ears. It should just exist and be easy to listen to over and over again. And I think that's something that, that the original soundtracks from all of the games previous that were all synthesized or digital, they certainly accomplished that in one way or another. They managed to transfer that into live instrumentation, which is super cool. Taking Dolphin Shoals, for example, one of the interesting points that they made is like, how do you get the music to to follow the transition that you see in the game with you're underwater and then you come up out of the water? What do you do there to kind of help the transition feel more concise. And one of the composers, Atsuko Atsahi, describes how they literally just used a key change to try to make it feel a little more emerging, a little brighter coming up out of the water. When it's so subtle this way, your ear picks up that it sounds brighter in some way, shape, or form, even though it might not be evident as you're playing. These are just some of the examples of how there's a ton of musical thought and complexity that went into creating the feelings and the vibes of the different parts of all the different tracks. But at the same time, how it had to feel subtle and, and almost unnoticeable to the player. Now, it's easy to talk about the usage of live instruments as being the pivotal factor in what made this soundtrack one of the best and one of the most memorable because we constantly have this default assumption that, uh, well, you know, if it can be performed live by real people, that's always better than if it's made digitally or with computers. And certainly if we take the original soundtrack and compare it to the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack, you can see a very solid argument for that. But as I was thinking about what all of this is, and I was thinking about what I was, what I wanted to say about this soundtrack, it kind of brought me to an interesting thought. And that is, there was a time, particularly when we compare the Mario Kart soundtracks from the 90s to the present one as the difference between synthesized and live instruments. It's Yes, it's very easy to be like, oh, yeah, this has so much more life to it. It's so much more impactful, real. It, it has it has depth, it has feeling. It's all, all these different things that you get with a live band that would have been very difficult to replicate digitally. But then I got thinking and I was like, you know what though? There is an interesting correlation between video games and music in exactly this way. If we go back to that original Mario Kart game and we look at the graphics. I mean, even Mario Kart, uh, the, the original game at Mario Kart 64, and we compare that to the graphics of Mario Kart 8. I mean, the, the, the difference is insane. <laughs> That's just talking about Mario Kart, not games that are meant to look realistic. I mean, it is absolutely incredible where games have come. We've figured out how to take a digital representation of the real world as we started with literal pixels that you could probably count almost on one hand. <laughs> to now, we have, there, there are games where it's almost you, you, you almost can't even tell the difference between a photo in real life and a screenshot from a video game. That's not even talking about the, the potential applications of things like VR. Well, how has music followed that same sort of trajectory? Everybody from Oscar Peterson and especially Herbie Hancock, they pioneered the usage of synthesized instruments in jazz and especially like moving jazz into different genres and progressing the music through the decades. And we might go back and we might listen to something like Herbie Hancock's Rocket and kind of be like, wow, this is uh this is a whole ball of cheese and then some. But in reality, think of that just like early 90s video games. I mean, it was difficult in the beginnings to really make machines and electronics do exactly what we wanted them to do. But now today we have musicians like Rob Araujo and, and Anomaly. These guys are creating absolutely incredible music all on their own, using nothing but a keyboard and software. <laughs> I mean, it's happening in jazz, but also in, in metal, for example. There are times when it's difficult to discern the difference between a, a real drum track and software.
So it brings up an interesting question. I mean, is, is, is that classic thing that we always like to say still totally valid? Is it true that live music is always better than synthesized music? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. But it is an interesting back and forth. I mean, here we are talking about the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack and how it's so incredibly iconic simply because of it's the first Mario Kart soundtrack to use live instruments. But then at the same time, we can point to the incredible advancements that have been made by producers and, and people making software to replicate real life instruments. And also musicians' ability to apply that software to create absolutely incredible music that we've never been able to create before in a completely digital context. In many ways, we have lifted the gatekeepers of music by providing anybody with access to a laptop and a keyboard the ability to create incredible music. I think that's a good thing overall. There are some things that a computer just cannot do like a human can do. But if you have a human telling the computer exactly what to do and where and not relying on, you know, quantization and, and having the computer fill in the blanks for you, boy, there are just times when it's difficult to tell the difference and I almost wonder if it even matters. Younger me would not have thought about that in that way. I would have probably defaulted to, it's made on a computer, it's somehow less uh, inherently valuable or good. But I've just heard enough music to the point where I was just like, you mean this is one person? Seriously? One person with a laptop? It's really unbelievable. So while I do think that the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack benefited greatly from using live instruments and it introduced a whole new level of musicality into the Mario Kart franchise, the idea that live just equals better, I, I'm not sure that that's always inherently true. But perhaps the mixture of synthesized and live instruments in the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack is a great example of the things that are possible now and the, and the way we can derive some of that value from both sides. We can create incredible live music while still utilizing what the digital world can offer us in music, and especially playing on nostalgia of the soundtracks of the past. Anyways, I'm curious to know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of the Mario Kart 8 soundtrack? Do you inherently like live instruments better than synthesized instruments? What examples of incredible digital music have you found lately? Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to check it out. Anyways guys, that's it. That's gonna be all. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please check out the merch in the description if you haven't got a chance to already. So many of you have bought merch and it's been so appreciated. I mean, that's probably the best way if you want to support the channel. That's definitely one of the best ways to do it. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.